This car um, is, is, in a, a nutshell, one of my top driving experiences of 2022. I would easily, effortlessly, effortlessly squeeze it in my top five, perhaps of even 2021 and 2022 so far. It's a 2022 Cadillac CT5V Blackwing. Um, it, it, it's uh, doing so many things to me uh, this week that uh, it, it's making all kinds of thoughts bubble to the surface. Uh, not least of which is that Cadillac is all over the place for good and bad. I haven't driven the new Lyric, really can't wait to drive that. Apparently it's quite nice, uh, but um, this car demonstrates what Cadillac and GM are capable of when they actually do things for the right reasons. I just recently reviewed the Escalade V and look, I was so utterly disappointed with the lackadaisical effort put behind that truck. I mean, essentially they just put the engine in it, called it a day, jacked up the price by $50,000 and figured that, hey, I'm gonna be mean, suckers are gonna line up to buy it. Um, the other thing is that, <laughs> uh, more meanness from yours truly, uh, Lincoln is lost. If there was ever a race between Lincoln and Cadillac, Lincoln is somewhere over there and Cadillac is on the finish line. If, if, if mostly for personality and um, more importantly, desirability. See, an automaker has to create cars like this CT5 V Blackwing to get, well, to put it frankly, idiots like me to gush over the brand and say the name a hundred times, thousand times over to get people to start thinking about the brand again. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, that was a leaf. Uh, this car is, I mean, from the moment I laid eyes on it, it, it to me seemed so special, so determined, so purposeful. Uh, unlike the Escalade V, which is its sole purpose is just to make money. This was created to please driving enthusiasts. This was, I, I, I love this car. Uh, this is one of those rare cars now, nowadays, you know, in the last two, three, four years that um, I hurt, physically hurt at the thought of returning the keys in only a few short days because it is, it defines driving, it defines luxury, character, personality, performance, emotions. It's just all rolled into this package. And for the first time in, I don't know, 12 years, 15 years, I would actually go and get this car in black. There's there's one specific reason, which is really silly, obviously, why I would do that, and I'll show you, show you that um, as I point out a few things about this CT5V Blackwing that make it so. And, um, and then we're going to go for a drive. And this, this specific CT5V Blackwing has one of the rarest, most precious elements that a true driver's car should always have in my humble pointless uh, opinion and that's a manual transmission yeah this is this my friends is is just a an exceptional automobile um so uh, all six of you watching this i'm sorry four who am i who am i kidding uh please stick around and enjoy the ct5v blackwing with me I, there is, um, the, the current generation CT5, the first CT5, is already a very, very 
handsome, pretty even looking sedan. And um, well, I was just decked out in V and Blackwing just, it's, it's just taking it to a whole other level. And um, I mean, the black just works. I'll tell you, oh, you know what? I'll just tell you right now, okay? I would do black because this thing has a lot of carbon fiber on it and you can see kind of the sun's reflection is a little bit golden, right? And this car has the optionally painted, uh, like a bronze copper color, they're dirty obviously, but uh, wheels. So see, in, in my juvenile mind, this car is only missing like a screaming chicken decal on the hood. No, I, I, I don't know. This is just what this car does to me. I mean, look at that front end. Look at that. Do you see this? Do you, do you see the power? Do you see the attitude, the determination? Uh, you know, look, last year I got to drive a, an M5 and it is obviously a, a superb automobile, but it's, it's kind of been, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, disinfected <laughs> compared to this. It's, uh, well, I can't find the word. It's, it's too clean. This is, it's dirty, it's bad. It's so good. I, I've been staring at it from my front balcony as it's parked in my driveway all week. And um, it's not that it's just visually over the top. It's, it's just so perfectly sorted. Okay. Who CT5V starts at $50,995. There I go again. <coughs> Excuse me in the US. $83,995 for the Blackwing. The CT5V in Canada, that's the regular twin turbocharged V6 version, which is nice actually. So it's at $52,998 in Canada. And this baby, this one right here, Blackwing is $87,798 to start in Canada. It is rightfully loaded, uh, so I won't go over any of those usual details, but when you, once you step into the, the Blackwing, all well, the killer is the hand-built supercharged V8. I'll tell you more about that in a few moments, obviously. Electronic rear limited slip differential, a magna ride, magnetic ride control. It's got uh, Brembo brakes. It, it's just got everything going for it. Uh, my tester is considerably more expensive than the aforementioned near $88,000 because it has a few options. One, I kind of just pointed out the carbon fiber. It is everywhere. There are two packages and this car has both packages. So you're looking at just shy of $11,000 of carbon fiber on this car. <laughs> I'm still a little bit sick from, well, I was sick when I drove the Escalade V, but, um, and uh, I mean, superficial, pointless perhaps, but, uh, I would absolutely spend the money on that. It's also got a uh, natural 10 black semi analyte leather interior with sports seats. I'll show that to you in a few moments. They're just unbelievable. The only thing I would delete from this car is this pointless near $1,700 dual, dual pane sunroof, which is, I think I just said it, pointless. Yeah, the bronze wheels. So you're looking at <coughs> $111,500 give or take. A few bucks but that might be may very well be the best one hundred and eleven thousand dollars you could possibly spend so yeah yeah all right so let's just make this uh, quick uh, well rear tour I mean do you really want to see the trunk 377 liters stuff fits all right um, so back seat, obviously this week's family vehicle. Now you can kind of see the tan and black. It's just, it's beautiful. And uh, the carbon fiber. And the carbon fiber. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, you get a better shot of, you know, the materials, the finish. It's just unbelievable. There we go. Um, see, it's not over the top. It's beautiful and just special enough again. And it tells you that there's something unique about this car um, and the suede and the leathers and all that and these fantastic sports seats. They are 
exceptional. Multi-adjustable, obviously. Uh, lower seat cushion, in and out, whatever. Uh, massive, massive bolsters. They're, they're really comfortable, amazingly supportive, and just incredibly good looking. Um, okay. Let's see. Up. Stop. All right, so there's the digital IP. It's straightforward, it's very cool, whatever. Uh, this is, you know, here, central nervous system. Uh, the only problem with it, it's it's the inclination, the way, the way it's laid out is that it, it's away from the driver. So sometimes the sun, you can kind of see the sun over here, hits it and it, it kind of weirdens out the perspective when you're accessing some menus. Otherwise, HVAC controls and the seat heater controls and everything. It's just fantastic. Um, okay. So, uh, I guess we'll start right here. Yeah, B mode. Yeah. See, so you can configure everything. I have it on, you know, semi-normal. I'll tell you a little bit more about that. But, um, yes, yes, yes. There we go. Let's go back to V. There we go. Okay, so V mode. And then you have down here right there your other drive modes so you have uh, the my mode which is configurable and in fact you can essentially configure all the modes but they have default settings and it's just it's just superb everything and then for the true enthusiast for the true person that wants to exploit the possibilities of this car this is your traction management setting so it's like a little menetina yes i use the italian name and you have all kinds of different settings for the traction control. It's, um, it's uh, be fully warned when that little light is on. Yeah, those rear tires get overwhelmed real fast. Um, I have nothing else to add. Um, yeah, there won't be that many of these uh, 2023 model years already out. Um, but um, anyhow, look, let's just go for a drive. Yeah, yeah, heads up display, whatever, let's go. I don't think I'm, I'm properly to you um, how special this car actually really is. By the way, I've been doing 90, well, I toggled through all of them there. Yeah, I'm in my mode. As I said, steering is on like mid, engine sound is max because I'm dumb. Brake feel is at zero or natural, I guess, or as close as it can be in this car and the suspension is on soft. and. The Magnaride dampers are just so wonderfully tuned to this car. It's it's almost perverse how comfortable this thing is for the amount of power it has. Okay, um, look, I'm I will admit that I am now one of the a very rare few auto journalists in North America for whatever reason. Yeah, yes, I'm a loser um, that has not driven a C8 Corvette. But if you ask me, this is the far more car between the two. Everybody's gonna rush out and get a C8 Corvette, or they are anyway, thinking that, oh, it's an appreciating classic or whatnot, but just based on numbers alone, sales, um, th this, this is just, it's, it's a magical automobile not you know not the least reason always keep your eyes on the road <coughs> excuse me because just that was 90% throttle I think and the pilot sport for uh, tires just broke loose immediately and everything is on by the way which is why I was saying the you know, traction management be warned if you choose to play with that lever and not realize what position it's in or what it's on the display. Okay, so I'm going to catch my breath. Uh, traffic light. The key is the hand-built supercharged 6.2 liter V8, which is... 
I mean, it was too in the Escalade V. It's, it's creamy, it's beautiful, it sounds fantastic, obviously. Um, and it does without any supercharger whine, which is, I think for this, for this application, like not an SRT Hellcat car, but for this, you don't want to hear it. You want to feel it, but you don't want to hear it. And, and glory be to, you know, engine engineers. This thing puts out 668 horsepower at 6,500 RPM. So that's 14 less than the Escalade V and a um, delicious amount of 659 pound-feet of torque at 3600 RPM. The only problem with that, and I kind of demonstrated it just now, is um, <laughs> managing that kind of thrust is very, very difficult. I mean, in the ideal, perfect, magnificent, magical conditions, this thing will do zero to 60 miles per hour, 97 kilometers per hour in 3.6 seconds. And this is rear wheel drive only, yeah? So not all wheel drive. If you opt for the 10 speed automatic transmission, no shame in that. I wouldn't, but no shame. Uh, the, the 10A is, is superb in this car anyway. Ooh. Um, but uh, you drop two tenths or cut out two tenths of a second in the sprint. You know, if that's your cup of tea, sure, why not? Mine, however, is uh, three pedals, heel towing, and um, just the the incredible thing kind of like there we go obviously another one another example all this traffic lights is um this car is honest too in a way that you hear obviously the v8s and the exhaust noises in the car but they don't come at you directly because they're pumped out of speakers it's an actual real mechanical engine noise it's it's real and it's quiet in here so you can really comfortably quietly cruise around your neighborhood if you can resist the call of this thing the the tough thing is that the gearing is relatively long so look first gear 50, 60, 70 kilometers an hour in first gear. So yeah, if, if you can short shift, it'll be a little quieter. If you keep the revs climbing, well. <laughs> but look, it, the, the, the thing, the many things with this car is that it is so civilized it, in size, in maneuverability. Okay, the turning radius is terrible in this thing. I mean, I mean, I, you know, a three-point turn in this thing is going to be a five-point turn. And I'm not even exaggerating. That's for real. But that's beside the point. Um, it, it's, it's comfortable. It's quiet. It can be civilized. And oh, the manual transmission, the clutch is like a switch. But you get used to that. If you release it a quarter of a third of a second too soon, you're going to stall it. Which I love it. And, and the throttle response, well throttle response is a normal more or less at the moment uh, throttle response is sharp too but uh, you feel when you roll onto the throttle like you're engaging with the mechanicals as opposed to an electronic switch uh, brakes I think I just touched on that um, you got to leave it in normal because like the Escalade V once you go into like a sportier setting it feels like you're stepping on a on a sheet of glass you know like kind of that slippery a frictionless sense that's exactly what you get once when it's in sport and steering is generally nice I mean on center feel is really good uh, I mean it's, it's there's there's just enough weight over the front end mother of God mother of God I'm not religious or anything but this car is <laughs> It's because it's two-wheel drive and it's manual, you really feel like you're on the razor's edge at all time. And I've only done, well now, four silly things with the car. Accelerating needlessly in lower gears just to feel the rear end. Uh, you know, want to kick out, kick out, not kick out. Um, oof. I don't know what else to tell you. 
this thing will do 200 miles per hour, you know, given enough road. Oh, I won't need that much to get up to at least 160. Um, and, oh, the grip. I mean, yes, the magnetic, magnet, magna ride dampers um, are, are tremendous as far as but even when left setting, um, most people who own these things won't track them, which I can't fault them for that. But the amount of, on the right surface with fresh pilot sport tires, this thing will pull a little over one G of lateral acceleration. The front end is, is it communicates with you as best as it possibly can, despite the weight and the sound deadening and all that. Oh, I, I'm not kidding when I say this is a more special car than a C8 and I've not driven it. And I'm just talking about special, about uniqueness and against any E63 or E53 that doesn't really count, or M5, or, well, RS6 is a different thing. I won't go there, but this may very well be, it's the most unruly of them all, the most involving of them all. And if this thing was available as a wagon, well, it would be it. I still go for the RS6 because station one, because unobtainium. Oh, so many words, I apologize. This thing is just exceptional. It's unbelievably good. Thank you.